You might be seeing scenes like this where you live. This is actually last year's Perseid meteor shower, and these images were taken in Syria. But this is the kind of spectacular celestial scene we get every year, and we are peak Perseids right now. So we wanted to bring Andrew Fazekas back. He's a science columnist with National Geographic. He's the night sky guy. So he's the person to be talking to you, and he's in Montreal this morning. Hi, Andrew. Welcome back. Hi, Heather. Great to be here. I suspect I know what you did last night. Were you checking things I, out? Yeah, making wishes for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Why tonight? What's, been, what's the big deal about tonight? <laughs> I think it's it, it, the setup is really going to be nice. I think, um, you know, it, the P, this is the annual... Percy meteor shower. This is so. This is kind of like I consider this the granddaddy of all meteor showers that happen. There's about a dozen across the year, but this one, always peaking around August 12th, 11th to the 13th, is really when it peaks. Is really uh, pr most prolific. It produces the most uh, the most number of meteors and the brightest ones too that you can see. So. Folks from, you know, even within city limits under light pollution will be able to see potentially anywhere from, depending on where you are in, in, uh, in what light, local kind of light pollution conditions, anywhere from 20 to 60 shooting stars per hour in the overnight hours uh, into tomorrow morning. It's such a big part of summer, I find, this tradition of when it arrives right at this time in August. Can you explain what these are and why it's why it's the granddaddy why we see so many at this time andrew so you know this is really nature's fireworks that's what a meteor shower is and it really is and what's really cool is understanding it's a humbling thing to understand what those little streaks of light that you see above our heads it's really little tiny stones little pebbles that are in a form of a cloud a cloud of these uh, are, are hanging around in space they're left behind debris from comets that swing by the sun and as comets do that, they shed a lot of material off their surfaces because it's mostly ice and a lot of dirt mixed in and stones. And those stones and dirt pieces get flung off from the face of a comet and are left behind in a cloud in space. And Earth, every year at the same time, like clockwork, slams into that cloud that's hanging in space. And we get pelted, our atmosphere gets pelted by those little stones. And we see them burn up, those individual stones burn up about 70 to 100 kilometers above our heads. That's where this is happening. And imagine something maybe the size of a pea, a little pea-sized stone can create that beautiful f you know, flash that you see in the sky above you that lasts only a fraction of a second. And they're traveling at, get this, over 150,000 kilometers per hour, that little pea-sized stone. And that's what produces that flash. But we get a flurry of them up to 60, you know, maybe even 100 in some cases uh, per hour that you can see from a dark site. In, in, from a dark site, which is key because of all of the debris. Uh, it, we always talk about the Swift Tuttle. That's the name of the comet, right? The Swift Tuttle comet and passing through that. We get all this debris and, and the, as you say, the shooting stars. Now, this year, although the potential is there for beautiful viewing, there's a couple of, of factors that may inhibit things a little bit. Uh, tell us what might obscure things depending on where you are. Right. So you have, of course, uh, we're just coming off of the beautiful full moon of August, the, the, the sturgeon moon or, or, or corn moon that happened this past weekend. And so there is this near full moon rising late at night, coinciding with the, with the peak of the shower in the overnight hours tonight. So the moon's glare can cut off a lot of the fainter shooting stars. But all is not lost is because what's happening is that it's going to uh, uh, basically um, 
uh, take away the view of the fainter meteors, but what's left are the brightest of the brightest. The cream of the crop is going to be left behind for all of us to see. So those bright meteors will shine through no problem. So you'll see plenty of those. The other factor is, of course, the smoke from all those forest fires that are happening. Uh, that can uh, create that haze in the atmosphere. But, be but beyond that, the, these bright meteors will shine through those. Hmm. So as long as you don't have a cloudy skies, you will see something. You will be able to make wishes. Well, that's good. I love that. So uh, any tips for where and when it's best to view? I mean, you, you are a big proponent of dark sky, obviously, as far out of the city, I would imagine, as you can possibly get. What is your advice? Right. So look, if you're stuck within the city, you are. Uh, then you can still turn down the lights where you are. So make sure there's no, the, 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 the primary thing is no lights shining in your eyes. So find a spot where your eyes are protected from any lights. And that includes, of course, our smartphones. We don't want to be viewing those. That will, takes about 10, 15 minutes at least for your eyes to adapt to darkness. And then you'll see more of those shooting stars, more of that show, light show. If you can get out of the city, at least a half hour, to an hour drive outside of the city uh, to any darker location in the countryside will offer you more views. But because of the smoke and because of the lunar uh, glare, I'd say you'd be safe even in a typical suburban park as long as you don't have any, uh, you know, anything shining in your eyes and get comfortable. That's a big thing too because you don't want to get a crink in your neck standing up watching for an hour. Get comfortable in a reclining lawn chair or in a blanket with some friends and it becomes an amazing family experience. I was going to say, it's a, you, you've made it seem a, a, a real event. And is this the same right across the country, Andrew? You'll see wherever we are in Canada? Absolutely. It's right across the country. The key is no clouds. If you've got no clouds, you'll definitely be able to make a lot of wishes. Expect anywhere from 20 to 60 shooting stars, depending on how much light pollution. If you're in the city, the lower end. If you're in the countryside, the higher end. Beautiful. Andrew, thank you so very much. Peak Perseid coming up tonight, and now you hear so beautifully why you're going to want to be outside uh, watching, looking up tonight and in the overnight hours. Thank you, Andrew Fazekas, and we'll speak again soon, I hope. Clear skies. Thank you.